so this image, this colour fudge copy that I have in front of me measures 10 by 8 inches. On here I've got some acrylic paper which I have stretched and this is A3 size and I have a very faint skeletal outline. If I was going to do this as a painting, because I think it's a really lovely striking boat, this is the minimum size I would do. I would even encourage you and say you'd probably even enjoy it even more if you, if you painted it even bigger um, as a painting, but I'm keep, keeping this as A3 size because I know that's the size that most of you are used to. I don't know if any of you have worked any larger than that. Um, but sometimes when you're doing objects or shapes, I think you get stronger shapes and enjoy your mark making more if you if you sketch nice and big. Um, anyway, that's just the way I feel about that thing and see how you feel. Um, I also talked about the possibilities of doing little bits of collage um, as well as introducing acrylic paint, which I've seen. So I will obviously just start painting in a few minutes, but something for you to think about. So for example, if you've got magazines, old calendars, anything like that, you could cut them up into pieces. So what I'm saying is part of your painting could be acrylic, but if you manage to get some bright colours, part of it could be stuck on pieces of paper. So for example, here we are. Here is a calendar and it's of space and I immediately looked at this area and I thought oh I could do that so there's a bit of my calendar which is got stars on it space stuff like that and here is a picture which is all about breakdown cover there you go on the nice lovely landscapes and I'm thinking well the colors match okay so I could cut out a rectangular here and place it it over there if I wanted to or I was joking and saying you know if so it could be anything it could be you could be looking in a, in, a, in a magazine it could be food could be biscuits could be a loaf of bread or anything so here I mean obviously we're looking at sand but perhaps you might be able to see um, in a magazine a picture I don't know of porridge oats or something like that anything that's or, or flapjack anything that's similar colors and textures and shape it's something for you to think about just something it's a bit of fun just as an idea you don't have to and you because acrylic is water-based i can there's nothing to stop me sticking this down and then painting on top with acrylic it doesn't matter um you know in, in the combination so you can may only see hints of the collage underneath it's just just something different that perhaps you could think about trying. Okay, um, it could be, you know, say this could be tissue paper or anything you like. Just, just something different for you to try. But I think for most of you, as I say, I'll, I'll only probably stick that bit, bit on a while. For the moment, we'll just start off. Um, and whenever I start with a painting, I always usually start with the sky and just blocking it in. So I'm going to start with my acrylics. And when I look at this picture, this colour ideally looks quite cerulean blue to me. I don't have it in my palette. So what I'm going to be using is Tharlow blue and ultramarine blue. So I've got two blues here, but you may find cerulean blue is useful. And then I've got my titanium white. And all I'm going to do is use a fairly big brush. And I'm just going to pick up some paint. And then we'll just do a nice wash over the back. So because the sky looks very pale, it's quite streaky, we don't want to mix up too much dark paint. So try and just pick up a speck. Other things to notice about the um, photographic reference that we've got is that we know that the sky always tends to be dark at the top. But I'm going to do a show you how to do a little bit of blending of the sky just to make it a bit more interesting. Rather than having it as just a blank wash, we're going to put some streaks in it. Okay, so I've just got my um, chisel brush, okay, and I'm just mixing it up and I'm just going to just whack it on in nice big sweeps. Okay. Okay, 
pick up a bit more. Just block it all in. So we're going to have a fairly streaky background to make it interesting. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some paint that's got more white into it. And that's just, I'm wiping the water off, I should say. So I'm just blocking it in. And then I'm picking up some pure, almost pure white. Okay, and I'm going to work in these patches around. So that is roughly where my sky finishes. And then I've got a white bit there. So I'm trying to make the sky a little bit more interesting. Rather than having a smooth wash, which I know we're used to doing, I'm going to make this a little bit more streaky. Right, so we're bl blending here. And it's drying quite quickly. So you need to start to put it on a bit more thickly. And then I'm going to drag and hold my brush a little bit flatter and just pull it across in big sweeps. And you can chisel it a little bit or just wiggle it a little bit if you want to suggest more clouds. So we start to get a more interesting sky because you've got hints of clouds in the picture. All right. So I'm just really roughly blocking in this shape. So if at any stage, so already this is, because this is um, acrylic canvas, this is drying quite quickly and it's a very thin coat that I've done. So if you, if you're not happy with your blending, okay, then you need to add more paint put more on or let it settle and then you can put another layer on over the top okay so it's very early stages so don't worry if you feel it's looking a bit too streaky so this color that I've got is fairly close to the um, photograph and as I say I can just so I'm, I'm, I'm picking up pure white it's it's um, pure paint, it's not wet, all my brushes are, and I'm just scraping the surface because I want to have a, a sky that looks quite, um, as I say, we're waiting for sort of more of a streak sky to go with it. So this is how you would do it to start to, to build it up and start to get the, um, your clouds or formations okay if you start to pick it up even more this is when you can start to dab and then you really start to suggest some some cloud coming through all right so this layer is drying and i'm gonna show you just how much more you can work on it so i'm just gonna pull some more through here A little bit through there. And then I'll pick up some white again. And as I say, so just spend your time. You can do this um, after this afternoon's lesson if you want to. Just blend in the sky just to get, get the effect that you're after. And you can just put as much paint on as you want to. Okay.
There we go. I might put a little bit more white, white on later. All right. Put a little bit more white on there. Until you've got it the way you want it. So that's a fairly sort of streaky sky, but fairly light. So depending on what you've got in front of you, you can start to think about where you want our bits and pieces to go. And we can just start to assemble our picture. So I've got some PVA here. There we go. There's my blob of PVA. I'll just scrape that and a bit there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick down my stars and they all wanted to go roughly about there. There we go. So that's part of my hull fitted. And then I quite like this colouring here for my shape. So I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just cutting it to size. And then there's my shape. Actually, it's probably better the other way up. And that's my little square bit there that's sticking out like that and obviously you could take this as much or as little as you want I've got some very nice bright pieces here stop there at those couple of pieces and I'll return to painting with acrylics because I'm conscious that we're all going to have different pieces of um, cut magazine colours and cutouts so it's entirely up to you as to how much cut out pieces or collage pieces you want to stick onto your painting. So the next step is to just start locking in the basic shapes. So I'm looking at this beautiful bright photograph and to me it's looking like a really lovely bright cadmium red really lovely and strong and bright so i've got my cadmium red out and i'm just going to again i tend to use my chisel brush quite a lot and we can just start blocking in the hole so which comes down to here and this is just pure cadmium red with nothing else added to it at the moment. Okay. And I'm actually working along, and there's a curve in the hull. It goes up in this beautiful sweep. So I'm just blocking it up to this lovely sweep here. And then we've got another white and it comes to a point there. And then we've got some white bits here. So I've just done that pure cadmium red at the moment. And I'm deliberately, um, with my brush, I'm doing downward marks to help with the shape of the hull. So if you start looking at the colours in here, we can start to block in the cabin and it's in shadow so we need to think about what color we're going to use so if you've got the color of the sky and then you come across and add some of that yellow ochre to your sky color you will immediately get a contaminated sort of neutral greyish colour. 
so if I put that on, my in fact it's quite pale on me. So I don't so basically if you look at this colour, it's like um a neutral colour and I can see on oh, my brush is a bit streaky there. So if you get, so if I repeat that for you, did all of you get that information? So if you go to the patch of paint where you mixed your sky, so my sky was mixed using my Tharlo blue and ultramarine blue. And if you add a speck of yellow ochre, you will get this sort of neutral cream colour, which is what I'm painting. And that's the colour that's on my boat. It's the colour of the sky with yellow ochre added to it, which gives you this neutral colour. Okay. And it's literally a speck. You just want to contaminate that white. You don't want to, you don't need to do a huge amount. So at the moment, this is not, and I've, I've left a few patches, not filled it all in. So if I wipe my brush out, if you just get pure white with no contamination, you can then just flick it across. Okay. And smudge it with your fingers if you want. Just so you get whatever you want. We're back to my contaminated colour now and I'm just going to put that in there. So I'm now going to get my ruler and I'm going to go down to a small brush and what we're going to do is we're going to mark on the white, why we've got white, we're going to mark on this white bar here. If, you, if you're not happy with your sky, then don't do this yet. You want to make sure the sky is blended until it's the way you want it and then put this on. So I'm just picking up a small brush now. You could also use a chisel brush because I do like the chisel brushes. And then up from here, it's probably around this angle. I'm thinking that's the angle of the bar. And then it's got another one below it, which is roughly about there. And then we've got a bit going up there, which looks, is it vertical? Let's have a look. Yeah, slightly off vertical, but it does look pretty vertical actually. Might actually that might be too much. I think it's more like that. There we go. So I reckon we're looking at that angle. I've just marked it in roughly. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go across. So this colour here in the light when I'm looking at it is looking like a, a sandy colour again. So I'm thinking if we go for our yellow ochre tone again, it is going to be too pure, which is what Jesus is talking about. We want to contaminate this yellow ochre colour because if I just add that it's just going to sing too brightly so we've got to knock it down so if you remember your colour theory we're looking for a colour that's opposite on the other side of the colour wheel to try and knock it down a little bit so yellow and purple make a grey okay so if we add a tiny bit of speck of blue, it literally, literally a dot, is going to go green. And we don't want green 
Okay, so we need to make sure that that amount that we add is the nearest smidge. And then we want to just add, just dull it down. So you can do, because it's on, it needs something in the red spectrum, or if you've got a dark brown, it needs that. I might try and dab as much water out of your brushes so you want your paint consistency to be like butter at all times you find it more helpful and this if it gets a bit fiddly what another trick to do is is to mask it off but i think this one i'll do for you is we'll just I'll just do this. So I'm going to use this as a guide, you see. Like that. I'll show you another way of doing it. You do have to make sure that your paint is dry, though, if you do this technique, and it usually works better on. It can work best still on canvas but as this is canvas paper it shouldn't come off what i'm going to do is to show you now a new technique which i don't think maybe before we've done before and that is you get some masking tape and if you noticed i'm immediately sticking it to my top okay there we are on my tummy and if you want to get a crisp edge is you can lay the masking tape down so you want to say right this is my angle so i've deliberately uh, stuck with masking fluid on my top to try and um cut down on its tackiness so it's not too strong so if I look at that angle, that is roughly around that, right? Like this. And then I get my chisel brush and I get some pure white paint and make sure it's really quite dry. And then I can go across like this. and do it nice and thickly so that it really shows up. If it was on a canvas, I'd probably leave it longer to dry, but because of was speeding things up, I'm pulling it off. There you go. So now I've got a, a sharp edge. So that's a, a nice effect of getting a really sharp edge. So, let's do a little bit more of the hull here and a bit more down here while this is drying. You could do um, with, with a pencil and a ruler, it's just, just define the edge of that cabin and a few of the lines down if you wanted to. We would, we, we, I don't want us to get sucked into too much detail yet at this early stage. The main thing is to block in our colour. So, this is well, my painting at the moment is very dark, and I will be lifting it in patches, and there's also um, a white strip running through it as well. So I can start to show you how to do that. Okay. So I'm looking at this colour, and it's a really, really dark colour. Um, and I want to keep that if it uh, because I'm um, looking at um, this colour here in the cabin and in the top. To me, and also these areas here where the highlights are, the colour of blue is looking more 
turquoisey. So I'm thinking I'm going to be using phthalone blue as my base rather than ultramarine blue. But as long as it's a nice bright blue, anyone will do. Over here, it's in shadow. So the phthalo blue that we'll be using, we'll need to dull or darken down. So I'll show you how to do that next. So what I would like you to do, please, is have some burnt umber squeezed out on your palette, as well as that far low blue. Okay, so here is my umber, which is a nice rich dark brown. And then in this corner is my Thale blue. And if I add the two together, I almost get a greenish black colour. Okay, so if I go back up to my, to my blue, okay, it's then start to look, going to look more bluish, okay. And I'm going to add the merest speck, I think, of white just to lift the colour so it's not visually looking black, it's looking blue. And now we have the colour that we're, like, we're after. Okay. So I'm just tapping. Look, there's hardly any white. I know something that ladies is that you mix too much colour or the colour changes too quickly. So if you just trying to get in the habit of just tapping the side of your brush and then mixing a tiny area to make sure you see how I've lifted that tiny little bit until you get the colour that you want and if you feel you want to go slightly more blue you add a little bit of ultramarine to it as well so you get the colour that you want. Okay so now that we have the colour that we want we can start blocking in and what we can do actually as well you wanted to you can do it afterwards it doesn't really matter too much if you wanted to you've got lots of options on this because we've got this white bar here we could mask this out we could cut a piece out of a magazine and lay the strip on um, there's all sorts of opportunities um, I wouldn't usually bother leaving a gap I would just attempt to put the paint over the top just to make it easy and block it in okay but it doesn't matter too much if, you know if you there's, there's, there's more than one way of doing it this I suppose is what I'm trying to say what I would encourage you to do though is when you're doing your brush marks I say so if you wanted to just so we can get a crisp edge as an example I'm sticking my masking fluid again Top, and I can say right I am going to use this as the um, not quite yet it is going to be there and it's got a slight curve to it so I stick it if my if I stick it down my finger and then slightly pull it turn it up and I've got a very slight um, arc to my hole. So say stick your masking fluid to your clothes first so you get a little rid of the little bit of tackiness to it and I can do the same with the end of my hole and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that the line will come up which is roughly around there. Okay so now I've got a nice edge for my or point for the shape of my hull and I can just pull down and block this shape in. Okay, and I can, again, if you wanted to, get a bit of masking fluid, just get rid of, stick it to your clothes so you don't have um, a 
and if you just use your finger and pull it around slightly you can block this in you can, there you go now I can just pull this down I've locked it in if you look at this shape here, you'll see there's a highlight on this side. It's where the actually the orange of the hull or the red of the hull is reflecting up. Can't do that straight away, but what we can do, just to represent that tiny little bit, is to just pull it up slightly. So you're just changing the colour ever so slightly. Let that settle a little bit, and you may find, I'm just going to wash my brush out, because it's such a strong, dark colour, we're going to need to put another layer of colour on, because I can see the colour of my um, paper or, or the canvas. I can see the texture of it on my hand, and I don't want that, so I need to put a little bit more colour on. So I'm going to need to leave that settle a little bit while I pick up some more paint. And now I'm putting on a second coat of paint. Okay. I'm now getting a stronger colour, which is what I want. And again, I'm just tapping on my white and just dragging it. And you may find that your paint or your brushes make a streaky mark. And that can be used to your advantage because it is a beautiful fishing boat. And the markings coming down with, this, with, this, with the, um, the way the light's casting because we've got, we can see the way the, the light's going. It, it, because we're working in the direction, the same direction as the coming down where the light's catching it, it'll only add to the texture of the boat and to the patterning of it. Because of the way the light's reflecting here, I've chosen to go vertical, but equally you could also go horizontal because of the, the plane and the way the boat's traveling but I've just chosen to go that way. There's no, um, there's no wrong way. You'll find, you can say you can really start to build in the color. If you find it starts to lift off, just, just let it settle and leave, but it's all it's going to do is just um, leave a nice texture because it is a weathered old fishing boat. So while that's drying we can go to this end or you can start to fill this in. So for those of you who don't have a piece of newspaper or magazine cutting you can, um, this is looking black to me, so um, you could use black or use your um, the way to achieve a really dark black, if you don't have black paint, you've got lots of options. You could use burnt umber, your phthalo blue and your ultramarine blue, and then add a speck of your alizarin crimson. That will help you get a black colour. You could use a really strong purple as well with, with, with that to, to get it but usually to, uh, by adding you'd have to have a speck of yellow to the purple and it might look more grey than black. Usually the, the way best ways to get a or mix of black would be to use the the brown and the blues that I've described. So I'm not worrying about this white highlight at all here at the moment. I'm complete this is this is not in my picture yet. On this side here, it's looking more grey. Okay, so we'll be mixing that next. This is nearly touched dry now, so 
I will just very gently pull off my masking tape. Now I have a really nice crisp edge. So that's an effect you can think about. Um, you may not be able to see it too much on the camera, but because I've got it slightly lighter here and darker there, I've already got sort of a, a difference in the structure. And I've left this gap here. It's not torn. It's not torn. That's not a torn edge. That is the, the paper underneath where I've left a gap because there's a little white bit there. So that's why that's left there. Okay. So we're going to start to block in this area here. So I know that this is my dark blue, almost black shape. And we go to my brown. On here, I've got my phthalo blue and my burnt umber and I'm adding more burnt umber and it's now going a greyish colour, brownish greyish colour. Okay. So what I'm doing now is, so this is the phthalo blue with the burnt umber which has gone grey. And then I've added some more titanium white, so I have a light grey. So I've got light grey, a dark grey, and the bluish tone, all in my palette all together. Only little tiny patches, okay? And then what we can do is we can start to block in this area of the, of the fishing boat. Oh, and we will also need a peel. So if you want, if you, you can also, as I say, just how I was starting to mask off here to get these lovely crisp edges. You can continue to do that for this end. Okay, right, so I've started to block in So here we've got a darker patch, so you can change colour. So you've got a dark patch on one side and a lighter patch on the other. And you can do what's called a wet in wet blending. So you can start to change the colour a little bit. So I've got patches of different colours, side by side, all wet. So what we did was I'm just picking up some pure or dirty white paint and I'm just dragging it next to the hull and I'm just going to pull it down and notice I'm using a chisel brush with a straight edge and it helps me get a good line so I can if you wanted to or what I'm doing is I'm effectively I'm mixing my paint on the surface of the paper you can do it on your palette if you prefer but this is what I'm doing and all I'm doing is I'm just pulling some colour over the top of the white until I get the sort of blackish colour that I'm after. It's going a little bit brown at the moment so I'm just going to pull in some blue. And then I need to pull this edge down like that. And then down here, it's going behind my little patch here. And I might, just for the sake of it, just pull in a little bit of blue. And a little picking up. Of it. So it's the Tharlo blue and the, it's gone too much Tharlo blue now. So if I just pick up, dab my brush, pick up the, the burnt umber, and then I'm dulling down that colour. So it's not as strong. 
And if I look at my line, roughly around here is where I want my straight line to go, or my white highlight to go. So I'm stopping around there. And then I wipe my, my brush clean. So it's, it's a very dry brush that I'm using, or a clean brush. And you can just pull some white paint over the top and this is wet paint remember so it's blending or making streaks so I get really nice like um, blending the way that we want it to be so this is where my rough start stops and then around this edge here I need to put in some blue by the looks of it so that's that's my line there. So around here is where I want this lovely brighter blue. So if I wash out my brush and just dab it onto a flannel or clean cloth and then I can pick up a phthalo blue and pick up some clean white we should end up with a nice clean bright blue which is what we're going to need below. There we go. And then if we get, again, I can get my piece of masking fluid, masking tape, sorry, a piece of masking tape. which I've attached to my top first to get rid of the um, tackiness of it so it's not going to tear my paper okay and I can get this the edge and I want I'm just going to tap, just picking up a little bit of the darker blue and I'm just pulling it in. There we are. A little bit darker. It's got a funny patch, isn't it? And there. You could just leave that as a, as a, I've left that as a little patch. And then here, we've got some blue patches as well. So this is almost we can go back here so if I'm looking at this I yeah I want to have probably have a patch there and perhaps not quite as long as that so I might cut that like that and then I've got yeah I think that's better and then there's another patch here roughly speaking And then this one turns to white, so I'll leave that. There we go, so I've got a couple of patches there. So we can while we've got that blue actually if we use our little brush we don't have to i mean we're picking up this style of blue we've got it slightly contaminated with the burnt umber and what we've got we've actually got yeah we've got another bit here so i've been making mine very crisp at the moment but i don't know whether you ladies have been using masking fluid so for, th for this one i'm just using my chisel brush like that and i'm just going to blocking the shapes that i can see this is where if you don't want to use masking fluid a chisel brush can be quite useful because you're still able to get the sharp edges that you want just by touching. 
so we can just touch and start to get the edge and then it's just a bit, I think about that angle like that and then when you know you've got it the shape that you want you can just go over the top again there we go so stop and pull down and this is just my so just get this edge going down like that and then pulling it down Yes, we will do a line so what I've got this so if I just pull along with my chisel brush all the way along do to do, do like that and then it's going down to there I think there we go I'm just pulling down my chisel brush just sketching it in that line and then I've got the, that edge so that paint is um, too thin at the moment so I'm just going back and you can just go over the top and I'm just pulling it down so that I get my sharp edge at the top and the bottom and then it disappears behind something and when you pick it up you can just pull a bit more on there so sometimes I know that that's had three applications to get it that intensity that I want for the top of my fishing boat. That's only had two layers. Um, so although you can't see close up detail in front of me, you know, sometimes you want that deep intensity. And I don't know if you can see, but the transition from the blue into the black has sort of suffered now that I've got that there. So if you if you were standing in front of me, you could sort of see see the difference in the in the colours where that's going. Okay. And then we've got a little patch under here. This lovely little arc going like that. That is not going down as much as that, so I can wipe that off with my finger. There we go. So now I think we are ready to start going down and blocking in some more information. I'm not going to do any more detail up here yet. I think we need to construct the rest of the picture. Um, so we've got this nice hull edge and obviously we've got the, the sand. So the next thing to do is, in my books I think, probably to do the hull. So we're going to be using cadmium red as our base but if we look at the colors because the hull here is in shadow and it's even darker so we've got cadmium red here in shadow here changing in here light slightly lighter and then darker still over there so there's lots of different um tones of the same colour and even though it's in shadow it's still looking quite warm. Here is my pure cadmium red. I'll bring it down here so you can see and I want to just put it slightly in shadow but it's looking quite warm in my photograph so I'm thinking I'm going to try and see that just pick, just, just pick up the merest hint of the burnt umber and add it to the cadmium red until it should be enough just to knock it down so now it should begin to turn there it goes so I hope you can see that it's now 
got the dark tone we want. So that's burnt umber. And if I hold it up next to the um, paint here and paint it on. Okay. I hope you can see it's darker in tone. So I'm just sketching it up and just pulling it up. Okay. And pulling it down. Picking up some more colour. And we can just because this is the hull and the sweeps going left to right, this time I'm using my brush going left to right. But equally, if you want to, you know, there's no right or one way. If you feel you wanted to go that way, you could. I'm not putting in, I've just put information wise, I've ignored this table at the moment. I've just put in these pots, I've ignored the, I think it's a sorting table. Okay. Just to block it in. Yeah, and we've got another dark bit here. So what we're gonna to need to do is to define some edges. Ooh, here we have a curved bit. Coming down there. Yeah, and then that bit down there. I'm just rushing to my brush out. So I'm just going back and I'm just picking up more paint, which is the burnt umber and the cadmium red. So there is where we have another change in tone of the red. And then around here, I think. Is where it changes and it gets really dark. So I'm going to pick up lots of the burnt umber. That is too light, I think. Might be better once I've blocked it in a bit more. Yeah, so I'm going to let that dry and then what I'll be doing is applying another coat. And then that is where it changes colour. So if I wash my brush out. There have my paintbrush and some kitchen paper and I'm going to pick up some more red. And then under okay. because this this area here also needs to be coloured in. And that colour you can all red in it. So if I just pull pick up pure cadmium red because this is wet it's going to blend on the surface of my paper and I'm just putting some red on the top like that okay there we go so now I've got that nice mound where our fishing nets are going to go and then we need to look at this tone difference here so I need to pick up Again, slightly different red, so we can fill that in there. 
definitely. You want to get that really nice sweeping shape coming up. I'm just pulling it out. And then most of this is disappearing behind the fishing nets by the looks of it. But we don't need to worry about that yet. Do all that later, just block those in. And then we've got a dark shape going on here. So I need to get rid of that white line. So if I rinse out my brush, and then what I'm going to do is I've got cadmium red that's contaminated with a magnet and it's slightly thinner and I'm just going to drag it over the top and just by dragging it we're just getting rid of the brightness of the white but it's enough to divine the tone of difference. So just by dragging it back, you can get it. Now this is dry. I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to add, so again, it's my cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and I've picked up the nearest hint of blue from the Farlow blue mix that we had, because I want to get this the tonal difference um, between this area here and this area here. So we need to get this nice and dark, but we still want to retain the red quality of it here. Otherwise, this is not going to show. So cadmium red with your burnt umber gives you a sort of brownish red colour. And because it's in shadow, you want to cool it down. So if I pick up the blue, the thyro, and go next to it, there you go, look, it will suddenly start to go into shadow. You see that? Now actually, only painted in this bit here. That's the first coat and it's making quite a nice texture. So I'm not going to paint the entire area of that. I'm just going to leave it as it is because I want that coarse texture of the boat. So this is where your, your chisel brush comes in very handy and get a nice sharp edge and it's really receding nicely ready for the next section because we've got um, the boat mechanism down here haven't we? which we'll be doing in a minute because we've got another another panel there and then another panel here and then all the raping over the top we'll work up this end first though and down here with a little bit We'll put a tiny little line there to remind us the curvature. And then we've got a tiny bit more around here. I have to got the now, don't we? Right. So this bit here, here we go. This bit needs to be dark, doesn't it? So let's block that in. And it's sweeping in this, this shape. Down. So that's too brown. I need to add some red to that. So I'm just rushing out, washing out my brush, and I'm picking up some cadmium red. But I am contaminating it again with my burnt timber. So we're getting that brownish red quality that we're after. I need to dab off some more water. So that's 
um, looking very diluted on acrylic there. Keep dabbing off and using, try and use my your acrylic paint neat. Try and paint with butter and you'll find it much easier. And then we've got a nice sharp edge there. And we've got a little bit here. I might have to let it try a little bit. So let's do that. And then we've got a highlight there. And that's almost going into black there. Quite a tiny area. So if I pick up a little pointed. So we want a little bit of black, um, almost black colour. So again, we're following the burnt umber, and we want to underline that there. And I'm just pulling it down, so we're behind this um, lobster pot. Here we go, and now we've got that dark definition that we want. Let's start blocking in some of the nice um, shingle and the background in the distance. So it's a really nice sandy colour so I can start to block this in. It's looking quite golden so you could look at using raw sienna as a basis and then we're going to add white to it and we could look at perhaps the ways of adding some texture, which is something that you ladies haven't explored before. I'm not worrying about any of the lobster pots yet or any of these complicated um, fishing nets yet. Don't need to worry about them. We can paint them on top. Okay, so at the moment I'm just going to squeeze out some raw sienna and I'm going to add some white paint to it to see what colour it looks like. And it's not looking too bad, but I want to warm it up a smidge because it's quite hot painting um, with the hull and the fishing pots and things. So here is the, your burnt sienna, pure on its own. I'll go over to my white and add it to the burnt sienna and it's looking um, quite strong so if you just add more white it's now getting quite nice and light so you could use that as a base because it, the shingle looks quite hot and then if you use your yellow ochre you can add a smidge of that to it and it'll you end up with the same color effectively because I would be uh, contaminating or warming up the raw sienna anyway. So let's enjoy doing some texture. And one of the ways I do this is um, just rolling it on. So we're not going to attempt, or I'm not attempting to do any smooth brush marks at all. I am just rolling my brush. You could even... Um, uh, do all sorts of things you could lay on a sheet of um, we'll do it in a minute if you want to you can lay on some kitchen roll lay on some acetate or lay on cling film because we want to suggest that it's um, you've got some shingle so as we get to the into the distance we would have the shingle looking um, smoother and more subtle so what have you got here? Oh, yeah, it's quite pale in the distance. So add more white and we'll add some of the grey tone to our white. And this achieves a couple of things. By adding the nearest hint of grey to my raw sienna, I am going to help that beach recede into the distance because it's very slightly cooler than the colour in the foreground. And this is a technique that you artists rely on. So all, all this area here in the foreground, we want to have it 
more pure or perhaps more brighter you could do dots of color or take so you want it much more warmer here in this area here and then cooling off into the distance over there okay so this is why this color although you may not be able to see it this color is slightly cooler than this color over here it's a slightly very slightly different color And it's got it's in a there's a there's a bank slipping away, so that's why I am doing streaks going downwards. Okay, and then we've got the the nets or the lines coming down here. Okay. So you because we want texture in the foreground and suggesting it's all on shingle. I would wiggle your brush in all directions or roller it or just make sure it's very scribbly in the foreground because you want that texture. And then as we get further and further away, we are going to make this smoother. You could, just like we did with the sky, you could also have freaks because the beach isn't one solid colour. You've got some bits that look quite light. And we'll put a little bit more of this in in a minute. So at the moment I'm just scribbling it all in just to just to get rid of my white canvas. And then so this area here is slightly cooler and we also have some boats on the horizon which we're not going to bother with but we have just got a horizon line so if we just make that a neutral line we'll just get rid of that <clears throat> and some sort of nondescript shape in the far distance There we go. Like that, and again over here. We don't really know what's what. Could be all sorts of things. I don't know what it is yet. We perhaps we'll make that up later on. So let's let's work on this area now and we will fill the beach in a little bit more. So I'm going to change to my chisel brush, okay? And I am looking to develop this area here. So what I'm gonna do is my so we have got that shape there by looking at the angles. So it's sorry, I hit my head's not in shot. I'm looking at the lines there, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to work out there is a line. Again, I've lost my guide, so I'm just gonna have a look. So we need a gap, and we need a line coming down here. I'm just sketching my back in, so obviously you follow yours. So I'm thinking that I need that bit there, which is reflecting up. You can see a little light panel there. And I've got another panel there. I, really want all, I might be in danger of running out of room, actually. Let's have a look again. So 
Mm -hmm. Oh yes, there we go. So this is just helping me work out. That's a little bit small, so I might need to I might need to move that across slightly. Might have gone into my white space there. Let's block these areas in. I'm getting picking up my chisel brush and dabbing it so it's clean but damp. And then I'm going into my cadmium red with my burnt umber so it's a contaminated red. And I am looking to put in a block there. And then I need another block. Yeah, and then we'll need a line there. I think that angle might be slightly steep. There, that's better. Bring that down slightly. And then I'm going to need to reintroduce that. Add that on there, and then we've still got this. I oh, need a white line there as well. Put it. I'm just washing out my brush. I'm going back to my white, and I'm picking up the sandy colour. And I'm just looking at. Well, the angle actually of this one is actually tipped. My mind's a bit straighter, but if I look at that angle of the this shape, I think, needs to come back a smidge to get the gap that I want, which then gives me this better. So I'm just blocking in the shapes that I want. There we go, that's better. Get rid of that white. Now we can start to blend. So all I'm doing sometimes is picking up, I've got the raw sienna colour and I've got the yellow colour and I've also contaminated very slightly with the blue to make it cool. Okay, because we're in the distance here and we deliberately want to make the area on this side recede backwards. And while it's wet, if you wanted to, you could even streak in some some white so you start to get a thicker consistency which might take you a couple of layers so don't don't worry but this will need lifting a little so I'm now picking up some white to put it down nice big sweeps coming down So just blocking this in. And we'll let that dry and we'll probably bring in some more variations. There's loads of ways that you can do this. Once it starts to settle a bit, you can then pick up even more paint. Okay, use your card. And you say, right, I'm going to pull a bit there. And then I'm going to do a sweep coming down here and by pulling it you get some really nice marks starting to happen and now that this is dried and now that I'm looking at this can you see that this tonally looking darker see that so I'm going to put in a pencil line to define the edge of our ship, my fishing boat. 
and I'm going to think I need to put a wash to colour on that to lock it down. And this is another effect that you can do with um, acrylic. You can do what's called a, a thin glaze or a hint of a colour, almost like a watercolour layer, really. And sometimes, if you want to make that effect look glossy, you add gloss geometry to it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our sandy colour and we're going to do a sheer layer. So, just, it just shows the effects that you can do. So, I am pulling a watered down colour over the top of the boat. So, what you can do. I just describe it because I don't think it's coming out from this distance. If you if you have your your acrylic paint watered down, you can drag your finger over and you can. Um, Get the shadow that you're after on the um, cabin, but you can still uh, see the white underneath. So we're beginning to get the the tone that you want. Because looking at the camera to me, that's still looking pretty pale, but it. All I can say to you is that it's it's a it's a close match or a match to your photograph reference that you've got. So because we want to be able to see the white underneath, you could equally apply it just as a pure paint, but I'm just showing you as an effect that you can do. By doing it this method, you get texture coming through which you may like. And there's lots of fine details and boxes on here. You could just use a pencil if you wanted to, to define those areas. And we can start to put in the lines. At the moment, what I'm going to start to do next, I think possibly for us, now this is settling, is we can perhaps put in the white hull line. So for this, usually the best way to do it is to get a really nice edge is to use your masking tape again to try and get this line running across Got to make it up so what i'm doing is is i'm sticking the masking tape to my tummy so that it won't pull the paint off and it needs to start there but it is not a straight line so if I secure it there and very carefully tap down and then curve okay I've got a very very subtle sweep and then if we do the same for the bottom which we want to be about there oops let's do that again stick it down so i'm pulling it and just very slightly wiggling it so we get a very subtle curve. Now I'm going to use my chisel brush and we can start to put this on. And we can go with the edge and we know we're going to get a nice crisp edge. Now down here it's lovely and rusty so I'm going to add some brown bits here or some it's burnt sienna to the white. You can just squeeze out some more white paint. So this is pure paint. It's not watered down. It's I'm, I'm trying to apply it pure from the tube. 
and get it on. So I'm applying it quite thickly. And then I'm picking up burnt umber. Because it's a mucky line with bits on it. And then up here it's looking grey. So again, we've previously mixed our grey by using our phthalo blue and our yellow ochre. And the fact that I've already got this blue underneath, if I'm just pulling my white paint over the top, if I do it fairly thinly, you can still see the blue underneath, which has given me a little bit of um, grayness to it anyway. But it'll look best if you um, keep it going. So I'm just whacking it on. And I'm going to add a bit of white there. And a bit of white there. So by doing it this way, we can get lots of colours in and we're not trying to draw this very intricate fiddly little line we're making we're making it much easier for ourselves so you can spend as much time as you want blending in lots of little patches of color to suggest this rusty line that we've got okay. and I'm just going to peel it off. You can sometimes leave it to dry but I'm speeding things up for you to help with time. Ah. So some of my ears it's gone a little bit wobbly so I'll show you how to turn that up. There we go. So here it's gone a bit messy. That's where the paint was too wet. So if I use a clean damp brush I can wipe it off because it's still wet paint and just tidy that edge and make that the way that we want. There we go, disappearing. So it's just a clean damp brush and because the previous layer is dry I have now deleted that edge that was bleeding and I have a really nice texture of a nice rusty line for my hand. That is as far as we have got today.